Please take all conversations outside of the chambers. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? There's additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of August 29th, 2018. I'm Majority Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon, Cabrera, here. Chin, here. Cohen, Constantinides, Carnegie, fresh in from the beach. I am here. Deutsch, yeah. Diaz, Drum, here. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. Borelli. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz, Lansman, Lander, Levin, Levine, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Present. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Te. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Here. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vallone, Van Bramer, here. Williams, Jaeger, here. Matteo, Combo, present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation which will be delivered by Monsignor Kevin Sullivan of Catholic Charities Archdiocese of New York, located at 1011 First Avenue in Manhattan. I'd also like to note that Monsignor Sullivan is a resident at the Roman Catholic Parish of Our Savior, located at 59 Park Avenue in Manhattan, and we are so honored to have you here. Please rise. So let's just, let's just bow our heads for a moment. Almighty God, as we gather this afternoon to take important action for the safety of our children, let us remember that they are also your children, made in your image and thus meriting the utmost protection and nurturing. We thank you for the creative ways that this council, its leadership, and others in the city and state have been able to come together to resolve a threatening and unnecessary impasse. Almighty God, allow us a moment to celebrate this small but important victory on behalf of the children of our city. We also ask your presence to continue to prod us toward 
tackling even more troubling and critical issues that impact the lives of New Yorkers, especially the poorest and most vulnerable. Lord, help us to be humble enough to recognize that our city and state are not immune from the alarming divisiveness that afflicts our nation, but Lord, help us to dare to be hopeful and confident enough that with your help, the concern for the common good of all might overcome the pettiness that tempts each of us to assign too much blame and take too much credit. Lord, I remind you that you are all powerful, so my prayer is a hope that you do your job. Almighty God, as we focus today on the safety of our children in the zones outside our schools, we ask your grace and providence that as we begin a new school year, they may be safe, nurtured, and well-educated inside our schools. And on every street and in every neighborhood of this city, may our young people also be safe from speeding bullets, thrashing knives, and devastating drugs. And Lord, I would be remiss today if I did not ask a special grace and blessing from you for those times for forgiveness, for those times that our institutions, and in a particular way, my Catholic Church has failed to protect children and then shamefully mishandled and covered that up. And so, Lord, while we pray for the grace of forgiveness, it's even more necessary that we beg for the strength that you compel us to a firm purpose of amendment that does not merely speak hollow words, but strong, committed actions that shout never again. Almighty God, we conclude again with a thank you for helping us to achieve today's step, and we ask for your ongoing wisdom, guidance, and prodding. God, please make our city a place where your likeness and image is seen even more clearly in those who are most vulnerable and most poor. Almighty God, we ask this, not merely on this hot August afternoon, not merely tomorrow, but forever and ever, amen. Thank you, Monsignor Sullivan, for that very honest, thought-provoking, and powerful prayer. I'd like to ask Speaker Corey Johnson to spread the invocation on record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to thank Monsignor Kevin Sullivan for, of course, being here today. For And I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. As you mentioned, Madam Majority Leader, Monsignor Sullivan has been the Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York since 2001. He was immediately tasked when he took that job with consoling families of those lost on 9-11, and he has made a tremendous impact on our city leading Catholic charities. Monsignor Sullivan testified here at the City Council a little more than a month ago when we conducted an oversight hearing on the Trump administration's policy separating immigrant children from their families Monsignor Sullivan strongly spoke up, stood up for these children. He traveled to the border to meet with children who have been separated from their parents. He was texting me from the border, saying, when I get back, we need to do something on this together. And I am grateful of his acknowledgement today, asking for forgiveness, forgiveness and hopefully justice for those who have been hurt and victimized and abused. So thank you again, Monsignor Sullivan, for everything you do for New York City and their families, and thank you for coming here on such short notice to deliver that powerful invocation. And with that, I ask that the, message, that the motion uh, of the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now have adoption of minutes. None. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. 
Thank you. We will now have communication from the speaker. Thank you again, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Before we begin with today's agenda, I'd like to send my best wishes to Xu Min Zhu, a member of our Community Engagement Division, who is leaving us today. He will take on, they will take on a new challenge as the Senior Community Liaison in the Mayor of Community Affairs Unit. Thank you, Xu Min, for your service, and we wish you the best of luck. Let's give Xu Min a round of applause. Xu Min, sorry. Showman, I apologize. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now on to today's agenda. We scheduled this emergency stated meeting to vote on a bill creating a school speed camera program. The bill we're going to be voting on today will keep New Yorkers safe. Most importantly, it will keep kids who are walking to and from school safe it will save lives, and it is the least that we can do for children in New York City and for their parents. This bill will create a local speed camera program, allowing the city to issue violations for speeding. This law will allow the city to issue violations for speeding in school zones. If you're going more than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit, you'll be hit with a $50 penalty and hopefully you won't do it again. We've seen the numbers and we believe this is a real deterrent. Though we are mirroring the state program, we are improving the state program in two key ways. Number one, the number of cameras is not capped in this bill. And number two, the Department of Transportation can expand the hours of operation. This is an emergency and our team worked hard to explore every possible solution. I'm confident in our ability to create an effective local speed camera program. The Council has strong home rule authority on this issue. I promised that we would do everything in our power to make sure kids were safe by the first day of school, and that is what we are doing here today. This was a team effort. We needed help from both the Cuomo and de Blasio administrations. We presented it to them, and they both worked cooperatively with us to get this done. The mayor issued a message of necessity so that we could vote on this bill today without the normal aging period where the bill typically has to lay on our desks for eight days. That was waived so that he could sign this bill by Tuesday before the first day of school. The governor stepped up in a very significant way to help us with a critical aspect of this program in giving us access to state DMV records so that violations can be processed quickly and accurately, and he did that by executive order. I am grateful for the partnership with Mayor de Blasio and his team. I see Jeff Lynch from his team here, who worked very hard on this. I'm grateful for Governor Cuomo and his team, Alfonso David, his council, and I am grateful, I am enormously grateful, and I really want to give, I want to give a big round of applause to our amazing, amazing, amazing staff. They have been working literally 16 to 18 hours a day the last seven days through the weekend to get this done. This, was n this would not have been done without James DiGiovanni, Rick Arbello, but especially Rob Newman and Kelly Taylor who have worked every single day constantly through many difficulties. And I want to thank Rob and Kelly and James and Rick. I want to note that while we've spent the last few days deep in this, it pales in comparison to the time advocates have dedicated to this cause. I want to thank Paul Steely White from Transportation Alternatives for his organizing and hard work. And I especially want to thank the incredible leaders and families at Families for Safe Streets, particularly Particularly, I want, to, I want to thank 
Mary Beth Kelly, who I see here, who lost her husband almost 12 years ago. I want to thank Lizzie Rahman, who testified yesterday, who lost her son. I want to thank Sophia Russo, and I don't believe Sophia is here today, but she lost her four-year-old daughter, Arielle. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Jane Martin Lavoud, who's here, who lost her beautiful daughter, Leonora. I want to thank Debbie Kahn. Her husband is here. They lost their son. And I want to thank Rita Baravecchio. And Rita's not here. But I see others who are here. I see Joan Dean. I see Amy Cohen <clears throat> holding up beautiful son and grandson Sammy. And I see and I see other family members, yes, who lost his son. The amount of pain is immeasurable and unimaginable for any one of us who has not had to live through the trauma inflicted upon them that they still must live with every single day. I want to thank them for their testimony here yesterday. I was incredibly moved emotionally, personally, and your courage is an inspiration to me that will stay with me, not just today, but whenever we talk about saving lives in New York City. This is not academic. This is not about numbers and statistics. This is about real lives and real loss and real grief and hopefully real action. Without all of you, we would literally not be here today. We wouldn't be here today, I know that. Again, the suffering is unimaginable to me but the fact that each one of these family members has so selflessly channeled their overwhelming grief toward ensuring others won't have to suffer in a similar way is a testament to their amazing character and their amazing strength. I would ask that each one of us stand and have a moment of silence for the families here today and for the families who are not represented here today but who have lost loved ones to traffic violence in New York City. Thank you. There are lives at stake here, children's lives, and now it falls on us as elected officials to fulfill our solemn obligation to do what's right by children in New York City and for the families who are still traumatized by the unimaginable loss that is unspeakable in many ways. I urge all of my colleagues to keep that in mind as we vote on this legislation today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders, starting with Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, followed by Council Member Amprey Samuel. Thank you. 
First of all, thank you, Speaker Johnson, and everyone that has been working so hard the last couple of days to make a new law in New York City that will allow our municipality to create our own speed camera program. A, you know, a crisis sometimes provides opportunity. And this is a moment that we can say that at a time where legislators in Albany were, were not responsible the city council, the 51 council members led by Speaker Johnson and all of us say we can make our own law. And this is what we are doing here today. So, but the leaders of this movement are the family for safe streets. As we heard in the testimony, every 36 hours, one individual is killed by a drivers in our city. That increased that situation to a level of epidemic and a crisis. And we feel that when the student will come back on September 5th, they, the students and the parents and the whole city will know that they can walk the street knowing that they're safe, that the camera will be working, that we care for them. So I just wanted to again to thank all everyone, especially Family for Safe Streets. And what we are showing today is also that even at a time when sometimes we don't agree from the city and the state, with the governors and the mayor, with the leadership, with the speaker and everyone, we were able to bring both sectors together, the city and the state, to agree to work with executive order that now allow this council to work with this bill. So hopefully this will be not only an opportunity to maintain the speed camera, but to expand the speed camera, to make any schools in our city safe for our students. Es un día importante donde hoy lo que estamos diciendo es que el Consejo Municipal de la Ciudad de Nueva York protege a los estudiantes y manteniendo la cámara activa cuando los estudiantes regresen en septiembre 5, le estamos dando una paz a los estudiantes y a los padres de que las calles están seguras para ellos. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, I was remiss and I apologize. Uh, Chair Rodriguez has been a leader on this issue for a very, very long time a huge proponent, someone who held a hearing two weeks ago, who held another hearing yesterday, and I, uh, I want to acknowledge his leadership, the long-standing leadership and advocacy in standing with transportation alternatives and families for safe streets and working on Vision Zero upgrades and safety improvements all mm -hmm. across the city and in passing numerous pieces of legislation in his almost five years as Transportation Committee Chair. I'm really grateful, Idanis, for your leadership here today. Councilmember Amprey Samuel. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Today we are voting on a bill that will protect children while they travel to and from school. And that sounds so simple. And the fact that we have had to figure out how to make this possible over the past several weeks is a little disheartening for me as a new member of the City Council. When I ran for office, I truly believed that introducing laws that make sense and protect some of our most vulnerable citizens would be supported. And this speed camera fight was a serious wake-up call about politics and egos in our city and state. But today, I really must say that I am proud to support this bill and have been a part of it, but I'm proud to be a part of this council. And today, I realized this is why I ran for office because it's not always easy, but when you come together and stick together with a real plan, with true leadership in place, and I wanna thank our speaker for his leadership standing against so many obstacles, this is what being a member of office is all about these days. And even though it's not, this is a permanent law, but we still have to get it right on the state level. Um, it's a proud moment for everybody, and I'm just thankful to be able to be a part of this. And again, I just want to thank everyone who was involved because it wasn't easy, but um, even though it's, it's, it's difficult at times, but today is a good day as we approach um, next week at the start of um, school in New York City. So thank you again, and I look forward to the work that lies ahead. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I apologize again to interject, but I, again, I, I should have recognized in that hearing we had a few weeks ago that Chair Rodriguez had chaired, we heard legislation 
from council members Ampri Samuel, Lander, and Joni, who were all searching for ways before the school season started to protect the kids. And each one of them were being thoughtful and creative about ways to bring immediate relief and preventative measures to the schools. Uh, Councilmember Lander couldn't be here today, but he is a longstanding advocate and ally of Families for Safe Streets. And Council Members Ampri Samuel and Joe and I have worked very hard on their bills and have showed uh, leadership in pushing these measures. And I want to acknowledge all the council members who were introductory co-sponsors of this, Chair Rodriguez, Council Member Alika Ampri Samuel, Council Member Brad Lander, and Council Member Mark Joe and I. Thank you. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now have report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 157 and Reso 508, Property Tax Exemption. Uh, coupled on general orders. LUs 164 and 165, 1601 DeKalb Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Report of the Committee on Transportation, pre-considered intro 1089, speed cameras. Coupled on general orders with a message of necessity from the mayor. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio for this message of necessity. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. And I'd now like to ask for a roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye on all. Borelli. Uh, no on intro 1089. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all, and also I'd like to uh, uh, say thanks to Brian Hodge, who is uh, interim in my office, uh, and um, this is his last week, and he's present here today, so I want to thank him for all his hard work. Uh, but I just want to say, you know, I just had my grandson, uh, my fifth one born, uh, two Fridays ago, and uh, I rejoice uh, in this moment, because uh, just in a few years, he will be going to school, and uh, just the thought of what the families that are here present uh, have to go through, uh, we must do our best. And uh, I congratulate uh, Speaker, I commend you uh, for your leadership, all the political volleyballs that you had to do literally uh, this week, uh, and to the chair and to the co-primes -prime, uh, on this um, amazing work. Thank you so much. Chin. I don't know. Matteo. Uh, no on 1089, I and the rest. Cohen. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Pass. Diaz. Permission to split my vote? Permission granted. <clears throat> Thank you. Madam Chair, lady, and my colleagues, since yesterday, we have seen and experienced how sensitive and emotional this has been for all of us, especially for our speaker. We, have, we practically saw our speaker going to tears yesterday while listening to the testimony of mothers, wives, and relatives that have lost their loved one because of negligence and irresponsible drivers. There's nothing, nothing we could do to return their lost one to those ladies and to everyone else that had lost someone because of an alien of a driver. The least, the least we could do, Madame Chair Lenny, support our speaker in this magnificent and great piece of legislation and vote yes. Uh, with the hope, expecting that this bill will prevent other mothers, other wives, other uh, human beings to go through the pain and the sorrow that uh, we have heard 
hear people testifying. So I'm probably vote yes in support of this bill and in support of my speaker, the Honorable Cory Johnson. I'm estoy diciendo que esto ha sido una, una pieza de ley o un momento, unos días muy emocionales, muy uh, difíciles eh, para todos nosotros, especialmente para nuestro portavoz, el honorable Cary Johnson. Ayer lo vimos prácticamente en lágrimas, mientras oíamos los testimonios de madres, eh, esposas y familiares que han perdido sus uh, Thank you, seres Reverend. queridos por el bien. So, no, podemos, no hay nada que podamos hacer para devolverle a ellos sus seres queridos, excepto uh, votar por este bill, respaldar este bill, respaldar a nuestros speaker. Thank you, Reverend Diaz. Este Muchas And gracias. How do you vote? Y yo voto yes. Gracias. And how do you vote, Reverend Diaz? He voted yo voto yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Drum. In uh, memoriam and um, in honor of the six children uh, during the nine years that I've been a council member, who have died on Northern Boulevard in the Jackson Heights uh, community, I proudly vote yes. Thank you. Espinal. I proudly vote yes. Eugene. I vote yes. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Um, on behalf of my district in the Bronx, I'm proud to support today's legislation. I want to recognize our speaker for his incredible leadership, for remaining firm and not losing sight of what is important. Um, speed cameras in school zones have been proven measures of slowing down drivers and keeping our children, our educators, and parents safe as they travel to and from schools. We have the data and we know that it works. And I applaud all of the stakeholders for being involved, for their relentless efforts, to the governor and his staff for the executive order, the mayor and his staff for the message of necessity in allowing the council to put forth this incredible bill, this leadership effort, because we simply could not sit back and allow nothing to happen. The fact that there was a stalemate in the state Republican uh, led by the state Senate um, was really a call to action for us here in the council. And I really want to thank the staff to Rob Newman and Kelly Taylor to Transportation Alternatives and certainly Families for Safe Streets. We appreciate your advocacy. I've had the honor of working with many of our parents during my time serving as chair of public safety. And the stories are heartbreaking. And we want to prevent more stories from happening. So we appreciate your efforts to turn your pain into a plan with a purpose, and that is to prevent injuries and fatalities across this city. This is the right thing to do. It is the reasonable thing to do, the most common sense measure that this council could put forth. And I could not be more proud to be a member of this body in supporting this on behalf of my district. So thank you, Speaker. Thank you to all of the staff for your relentless hours of making this happen today. We appreciate you, and we salute you, and we applaud you, and I proudly vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Jonai. Aye, I know. Gordenchik. Uh, with best wishes to uh, everybody for a happy and safe Labor Day weekend, remembering all that labor has done uh, to build this great nation, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission I just, granted. I just want to say, on behalf of all the children and parents in this city, thank you to the New York City Council, and thank you so much to our great speaker for this legislation. I know people will be breathing easier tonight. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I vote aye on all. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Aye on all. 
Powers. Aye and all. Reynoso. Aye and all. Richards. Aye and all. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I, I want to let, I, I want to speak about my gratitude to the families, the mothers, the wives, the fathers, all the family members who keep their legislators' feet to the fire day after day, month after month, year after year, making sure that another family doesn't have to go through what they've been through. They are persistent, they are tireless, and I'm grateful for them and their fortitude and courage. I'm also grateful for the opportunity to have stood on West 72nd Street with families for safe streets to let Upper West Siders know about why we're in the situation that we're in, the shenanigans that politicians in the state Senate think are okay to play. And lastly, I am grateful to our speaker, to our mayor and the governor for taking action, for saying, for calling it what it is, which is ridiculous shenanigans and instead, giving us this opportunity to do the right thing, to vote yes, to have this bill, and to bring our safety cameras back. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to thank the, this body, the speaker, and the, uh, the co-sponsors of this bill. You know, today I'm extremely proud to be a member of the New York City Council. Uh, today we're righting a wrong, something that our New York State Senators cannot do in Albany, we're doing here in the city of New York. Um, and today, this bill means a lot to me as my four-year-old son uh, had his um, first meet and greet with his teacher because next week he's gonna start class for universal pre-K. And so it means a lot to me and rewarding to know that as a member of this New York City Council, um, we delivered for our youth and our young kids to make sure our streets are safer. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Torres. I proudly vote aye. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Last summer, uh, a teenager was killed in my district by a reckless and heartless hit and run driver. And the community and I in Gravesend have been insisting and demanding that the DOT insta install a speed camera near a school on Avenue T in my district, which also happens to be in the district of Senator Marty Golden, which him and his conference have only shown inaction, inertia, ineptitude, and indifference to the lives that have been lost and impacted by reckless speeding, particularly near our schools. So I just want to say to the speaker, thank you for your extraordinary leadership, not just with words, but with actions and deeds. You've brought both city and state leaders together, and you have found a, a path forward after pledging that we will explore every legal avenue, every option available to the city of New York. So Senator Flanagan, I hope you're watching this, maybe from your golf club, this is what leadership looks like. This is what making sure our kids, our seniors, our families are safe, this is what this looks like. I proudly vote aye. Thank you, Councilmember Traeger. Ulrich. I am uh, voting aye. I normally uh, vote against the uh, cameras because I think that they are solely used by the city to re uh, generate revenue. But I have to tell you that as a parent, uh, and with school just around the corner, it frightens me to think that they will not be reactivated and that cars can be speeding around the schools. I support speed cameras and red light cameras around schools, senior centers, and anywhere else in the city where we have vulnerable populations. Um, and I think that's where they should be placed. And that's why I'm voting yes today, because I care about the safety of our children, 
And, um, and my heart truly breaks for those parents uh, that are here today. I'm very, very sorry for your loss, and uh, hopefully what we're doing today will prevent future tragedies from occurring. So I'm voting yes. Thank you. Valone. I and all, and God bless our children. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. So uh, first, Speaker Johnson mentioned Lizzie Rahman, who is here in the balcony. And I just want to once again thank her uh, for her leadership in Queens in particular. Long before I was elected to the New York City Council, I took part in a march uh, on Queens Boulevard where the ghost bike dedicated to her son uh, was installed. Uh, may there never be another ghost bike installed in New York City. But I also wanted to tell the story of Noshat Nahian as we talk about all of the children who we've lost. Several years ago, Noshat Nahian, who was eight, was walking across Northern Boulevard with his 11-year-old sister to go to PS 152 in Woodside, Queens. They did not make it across Northern Boulevard, mm. and Noshad Nahian died at eight years of age. A couple of days after that, uh, in a brutally cold night, there was a memorial service for Noshad Nahian. And I went, and I saw his mother, uh, and even though she did not speak English, the pain on her face was unreal. Mm. And I never, ever want another mother or father to experience that pain. I know the parents in the first row in the balcony have experienced that pain. So what we do today is incredibly important. Uh, it is so remarkably important and simple in so many ways that it took this long, that it takes such a fight to protect the lives of children is in and of itself disgraceful. But the fact that this body is taking a leadership role is, I hope, uh, some sense of hope and promise delivered uh, to the families here today and others. I do want to make sure that we thank Make Queens Safer, which has fought this fight in Queens for so long, uh, Transportation Alternatives, and Families for Safe Streets, and everyone. And let me just say, we should have speed cameras in front of every single school 24-7. Make no mistake. Thank you, and I vote aye. Thank you for your very moving words. Thank you. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, grace, peace, and blessings to the families uh, who have joined us, and thank you for letting us not forget your loved one's names and turning pain into purpose. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to council members uh, Rodriguez, Ampi Samuels, and Lander for their leadership, and especially uh, Speaker Johnson for his leadership uh, on, this, uh, on these bills and this measure, and finding a creative way to respond uh, when there's lack of leadership from the state. Too often municipalities are forced to try to find a way to fill in when the state will not respond. This is an excellent example of that. I um, have reservations about uh, some of the things we've done around Vision Zero and speed cams, uh, but I believe this bill in particular, there is not much that can be said for anyone to disagree on why these cameras should be in schools, and so I'm proud to vote aye on this bill uh, and fill in the gap where leadership wasn't there. I do want to just say it's, uh, it's good to see uh, the mayor and the governor uh, and the speaker finding a common theme in which to respond to. It shows what can happen when uh, we agree on something. I believe it also shows the expedience that things could happen uh, during an election year. But I hope uh, this kind of collaboration uh, will move forward on a whole host of issues uh, that are challenging our city and other cities across the state. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam President. Um, very few New Yorkers are untouched by uh, vehicle violence. I think, uh, I think it's, far, it's hard to find somebody who doesn't have a family member, a friend, or somebody who's had somebody who was hit by a car at some point or got into a car crash of some kind. A number of years ago, a young cousin of mine was struck and killed by a car a block away from my parents' home. Um, and my story is like everybody else's story. 
the pain of the advocates who are survivors of those who were killed by cars is immense. I was here yesterday in this chamber and watched the hearing, and it's real, and they've been working hard uh, to get a measure of not just calm for themselves, but a measure of, of a resolution of things that can be done to reduce speed in New York City and to reduce the instances where this can occur. That's why I support speed bumps outside and near every single school. I've asked for them. In some cases, from DOT, it takes months, sometimes longer, until they even go out and check whether or not a location is appropriate for one. Not just in the eight months that I've been a council member, my predecessor's done it. As a community board member for 18 years, my community board's done it. So perhaps at some point, the DOT can look into things that are traffic calming solutions that are more than just uh, speed cameras that raise revenue. Um, this bill, in my view, is not within the purview of the council. As you know, those who have heard me in the past, I uh, have immense respect for this body and our powers and authorities. And I don't vote for measures that I do not believe are within our legal authority to do. This is such a measure. And my reasoning for that is more than I get in the remaining 10 seconds, but I'll be as quick as possible. Uh, 96 hours ago, and for the last 15 years prior there too, it was never thought that this body had the right to do this. Up until 96 hours ago, we did not believe we had that right to do. Madam President, I'll wrap up very quickly. Um, I respect greatly the wise legal minds who are far wiser than I, who believe we have the right to do this. But in my view, and perhaps not as wise as those who believe otherwise, we don't. And so with that, I'm not going to be able to vote for this. Um, I, again, have an immense respect for those who feel otherwise, but I can't vote for it. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention my thanks to the Daily News for letting me know about today's meeting and yesterday's hearing. I'm very grateful to the members of the press for letting the members of this council know about it. And with that, I vote no on intro 1089 and aye on all remaining matters. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam uh, Majority Leader, I just want to uh, put on the record that I uh, disagree with the council members' uh, legal interpretation uh, for the record, and I also want to put on the record that um, other council members, uh, as we discussed earlier today, were given what we consider appropriate notice on a complicated matter. Thank you. Duly noted. Thank you. Deutsch. Thank you. Permission to uh, play my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to being nice to me today. Um, so I just want to start by saying that people have a mentality, mentality that when New York State or New York City add, add red light cameras, speed cameras, uh, issuing overzealous parking tickets, raising taxes, raising the cost of meters, et cetera, I could go on and on. They believe it's all about revenue, and I could understand because sometimes I believe that it's all about revenue, and people uh, lose trust in the city and state and are sick and tired of being nickeled and dimed. Uh, that being said, um, although I originally had some concerns in general, but my concerns and my mind has been totally changed over, and I believe that having speed cameras in reducing or eliminating any injury and, of course, any tragedy is something that we need to take action on. If the state doesn't do it, we need to do everything possible that the city should do it. And if need be, we should take off. And if we do get sued, we should go out with our, our staff members and direct the traffic in our schools to send a message. Sitting on the Transportation Committee here in the City Council and having attended and question, asked questions in all the hearings, um, I paid attention to every detail. And the parents who are sitting up there in the mezzanine who testified really shouldn't be here advocating. Those tragedies should have not have happened. I, having five children and two grandchildren, um, will never know and should never know and no one should ever know what it feels like losing a loved one. 
And although I still don't believe that relying on technology alone is the answer, we need as a city to add extra layers of protection, which I mentioned at the hearing, which includes expanding busing to all our elementary students. So this way parents are enforced to walk or drive the children to school to reduce that vehicle traffic as well as pedestrian traffic at schools by expanding bus service. In addition to that, making sure that every single school in our city has a school crossing guard. And thirdly, we need to make sure that we also expand those traffic control offices in areas where there is a high prone accident locations near schools to have those traffic control offices directing traffic and making sure that there is a, a smooth uh, traffic pattern near and around our schools. So um, I will continue to advocate for these three things, and I have a bill on two of those, which is one, expanding bus service, as well as expanding traffic control offices in, throughout the city near our schools. So with that being said, um, I will vote today, proudly vote today, I on making this happen and making sure that our school children are protected. And I would like to thank the transportation chair, Udonis Rodriguez, for spending hours at the hearings. And I want to thank <clears throat> the advocates and the parents uh, who are here with us from fa Families for Safe Streets. Uh, and um, we're here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. I proudly vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I proudly vote aye, and <clears throat> for those that didn't know this, Bill needed a supermajority today of 34 because of the message of necessity, and I am glad that we far surpassed that number to enact this very important law. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1089, which was adopted by a vote of 41 affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. We will now have introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. There are no resolutions on today's agenda, so we will now move right into general discussions. We have, and we will begin with Council Member Vanessa Gibson of the Bronx. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. And as my colleagues are leaving, I just want to take a very quick opportunity to make a very important announcement. Um, it is with such a bittersweet moment for me. Quiet in the chambers as the council member of District 16 that our team is saying farewell today to our chief of staff, Dana Wax. For over three years, Dana has served as a dynamic, hardworking, and amazing chief of staff leading both our legislative and district offices. And it has not been easy, but Dana has done it with love, with compassion, and truly her heart has been in this job. And so it comes at a time when we say farewell to Dana as she opens up a new chapter of public service working for a city agency. And I just want to say on behalf of our staff how much we love and appreciate Dana. I would not have been able to get through a three-year rezoning, Jerome neighborhood rezoning, without Dana at my side. She's hardworking, she's dynamic, she's amazing, and I know she's going to do well. Often in our tenure as elected officials, there are people that are called into our lives and put in our path for a time, a reason, and a season. And as this season comes to a close, I know that the new season that Dana will now put forth in another city agency is going to be even better and even greater. And so, Dana, we wanted to say on behalf of our team, Team Gibson, how much we love you, we appreciate you, and I know that only the best is yet to come. May God bless you and keep you in his mercy and grace, and we know that our paths will cross again.
again. So if everyone could please join me in giving a warm round of applause for my chief of staff, Dana Wax. Congratulations, Dana. We are so proud of you, and we know that whatever agency that you're going to, you'll be able to prep them thoroughly for a line of questioning from Councilmember Gibson. Next, we have Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just wanted to take time to pay tribute to the great singer, songwriter, performer, Aretha Franklin, and make note of her passing. She was inducted into so many halls of fame and so many tributes and honors and awards and Grammys that she won. And what she did, which is outstanding for me, was that she was not just a performer, but she was very much involved in the civil rights movement. And for me, persons who are in the public eye, who have the public attention, and who then bring that attention to issues that they think are important are so much are the type of people that I like to pay tribute to. So I just want to provide this information. She provided money for civil rights causes and groups, oftentimes covering their payroll. She gave benefit performances on behalf of those groups. And when Angela Davis was jailed in 1970, she said that Angela Davis must go free. Black people will be free. I've been locked up for disturbing the peace in Detroit. And I know that you've got to disturb the peace when you can't get no peace. So one of her songs became sort of an anthem, and that song is Respect, which we know is spelt R-E-S-P-E-C-T. And I certainly want to give tribute to her and say that she gave uh, the, the thrust for us to receive respect, not just for individual people, but for our movement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron. We'll now hear from Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. Thank you, Majority Leader. The powerful prayer of Monsignor Sullivan at the start of this stated meeting still echo in my mind as I rise to speak to you. He prayed for hope when he spoke of the family separation crisis we all experienced this summer and the aftermath we are all still trying to address. Our Washington crisis vividly and viciously demonstrate how easy it is for the federal government to abuse our immigration laws and allow for enforcement agents to act with impunity. It is now more critical than ever that the New York City continue to use our constitutional right to define our cooperation with immigration enforcement, enforcement agencies, an agency that is terrorizing our immigrant neighbors, forcing many of them to go back into the shadows. The council, this council, has done much over the years to show its commitment to protecting the rights of all New Yorkers, making them feel safe to use city resources and participate in civic life, no matter their immigration status. In 2014, we passed detainer laws that began to untangle city enforcement from civil immigration enforcement. Then in 2017, the council passed even more expansive detainer laws, including Local Law 228, which prohibits the use of city resources, property, and information obtained on behalf of the city in the furtherance of federal immigration enforcement. In addition to these detainer laws, the council has also passed legislation to provide free immigration lawyers to all detained immigrants who need it, bar immigration enforcement entities from entering non-public city property with impunity, and barred city resources from going to immigration enforcement, enforcement entities. Now I proudly introduce intro 1092, which will make it illegal for the city of New York to enter into revenue contracts with any entity engaged in immigration enforcement. With this law, the city of New York will be prohibited from providing goods or services for fee or any in-kind payment for entities engaged in federal immigration enforcement. We as a municip municipality have the power and the constitution to define our role, to define our relationship with agencies like this. And this council should take pride in the sanctuary that we have created for all our neighbors living through one of the most radical immigration enforcement systems in recent memory. And until we get comprehensive immigration reform at the federal level, the city of New York will continue to stand up 
for its residents, regardless of their immigration status, and continue to pass legislation and policies that limit cooperation with the federal government's inhumane enforcement agenda. I urge you all to get on this bill. We have a hearing next week on the 6th Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca. And we will now close. Um, as the Majority Leader, I just wanted to thank all of our colleagues for finding it not robbery to come today. I know that this time is often time that we're able to catch up with family, with friends, um, our health. And so I'm so happy that so many of you came today for such an important vote. As a new mom dropping my son off for the first time um, in daycare, this was really so important for me to be here today because he's been given the opportunity to go to school safely. And so it's important that we continue that uh, for all children all across the city of New York and beyond. And I also want to uh, join my colleague, uh, Councilmember Inez Barron, in recognizing the phenomenal career of Aretha Franklin, who is certainly an inspiration to all of us who died at the age of 76, unfortunately, of pancreatic cancer. She was known as the Queen of Soul, and she was a dynamic singer, and so many of her songs inspired the feminist movement, such as Respect, Natural Woman, I Say a Little Prayer. And we want to recognize this phenomenal woman who utilized her voice, her national treasure, to inspire an entire generation, winning 18 Grammy Awards, three American Music Awards, three NAACP Awards. She is certainly a national treasure and an inspiration to all of us. And I'll just leave you with one quote. She said, we all require and want respect, man or woman, black or white. It is our basic right. So I thank all of you today, and I thank Aretha Franklin for giving so much of her life and inspiring so many of us to do the important work that we do. And I thank all of you for being here today, the children of the city of New York, thank you. And with that, we will have Speaker Corey Johnson close out today's meeting. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I wanna thank Councilmember Barron as well for her moving remarks related to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. And I, uh, just before she passed, was alerted to that amazing quote about Angela Davis. So to hear Councilmember Barron read that quote today, I thought was very important. She was a civil rights leader and icon. Mm -hmm. She is someone who uh, didn't forget where she came from. She was still living in Detroit, uh, being active in her local community, speaking up about civil rights matters, uh, and I am, enormously grateful for the inspiration she's been, not just to women of color across this country, but to all people across this country. Uh, she was a beautiful woman. She was a natural woman. She did command and demand respect. And uh, our country is a much greater place because of the Queen of Soul, because of Aretha Franklin. She was bailing people out of jail who were getting involved in civil rights demonstrations long before anyone ever talked about bail reform. Aretha Franklin was doing it. She was a trailblazer. She was an icon. One of my best memories is being on the mall, watching her perform at President Obama's inauguration with that big, beautiful bow on top of her head. So rest in peace and power, Aretha Franklin, and with that, today's stated meeting of August 28th, 2018 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. I meant August 29th, 2018. If we correct the record and the transcript, and it's Wednesday.